Today I'm building a rolling cart. Though maybe you'd call it a rolling island. It's going into this cafe area here at our church. This cafe is just being built right now and as part of the build I was asked to build a rolling cart for this gap in the counter and the reason there's a gap here is that this is going to be a serving window. It's not done yet and of course when you have the window open for serving you need to be able to get right up close to it but at other times when it's not being used they like to have the counter continuously across so they want that gap filled. So the first thing I did is I took a lot of measurements because while of course this all looks new to you, um, the building is over a hundred years old and the floor is not level. And um, they gave me a, a photo of a design that they had in mind so I had something to work towards. And yeah, those lap joints are going to be a bit of a, that's going to be the fun part of this video. They also provided me with this chunk of countertop to use as the top of the rolling cart. Um, this helps unify the look of the cafe because it has the same countertop everywhere. It makes my job a little simpler because I don't have to build a top. It also makes my job a little tough because it's, um, well I mean countertops are made of particle board. Particle board is not particularly strong so I, I have to come up with in my design, I need to come up with an understructure that's going to support and reinforce this. So of course the first thing I did is go into SketchUp and start designing. And I'm showing you the end results here. In reality there's a lot of back and forth and starting over before I got to this point. The top and the overall height are our main constraints. So I first drew in the top which has this recess in the underside and we needed to get those dimensions right. I then drew in a subframe that would fit into that recess under the top. I then added those X-shaped legs to the design and that gives us a cart that looks kind of like this. You know, I'm a bit worried about racking since there's not really a bottom cross piece, but we'll see how that shakes out in the actual build. I next add dimensions to the design so that I can work off of those in the shop. I also added a 2D rendering of one of the ends, and I just loaded that part of the image with all kinds of dimension guides that will, again, help me with building. And finally, I duplicated all the pieces and I pulled them off to the side, which gives me kind of a virtual cut list of parts. So I'm actually getting a bit ahead of the story because in reality the first thing I did was order the casters for the projects. I needed the actual dimensions of the casters and I wasn't going to trust the catalog comments for that. I need the actual dimensions of the casters to finalize the design of the project since I have this target height that I'm shooting for. And at the same time I ordered some bed bolts which I thought would be a good way to attach the long cross piece to the ends. These are 5 inch tall casters rated at 110 kilograms each so they should do the trick. I started with ripping down some oak or ash to 3 inch wide strips to build the supporting frame for the top. I say oak or ash because I really don't know what species this is. I'm building this part of the project from some salvaged old church pew pieces that a friend gave me. They're actually from some other church as well, not our church. And yes, I thought that it was kind of funny that I'm using salvaged church wood to build a church project. I wanted a bit of an overhang at the end, so I added a small curved cutout at the end of the support pieces. And for speed and simplicity, I drilled a bunch of pocket holes and used pocket hole screws to assemble this frame. At the same time, I drilled all the mounting holes that I will later use to attach the countertop, also with pocket hole screws. So this is what I think is sort of the, the tricky part of this build and um, so this is what I'm probably going to spend the most amount of time in this video talking about. So I'm building a mobile cart, mobile serving cart, mobile countertop, mobile island, call it whatever you want. It's going into a cafe at church and this is the design I've been given here with the countertop and they want these X, X legs on the end. And that's going to be a bit of the trick. So I drew it up here in uh, 2D, 3D, and then I, I have a 2D rendering of it with all kinds of dimensions. And I transferred the critical parts here to this piece of paper. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to cut these two X pieces, where they're going to overlap, how long they need to be. And I know this gap down below, and so I've drawn the line for the top board, and I have that marked out here. And I've drawn the line for the bottom board. And the bottom board where the wheels are, I'm going to probably make that a little bit wider than I have in the plan just so I'm as stable as possible. But the key is the top board because, you know, the X is going to line up to the top board 
at each end and so that's the length that I have here at this end also. And now I'm just going to take one of my cross pieces and I'm going to put it on here. And then I can just draw right on the plan and let's see what that looks like. Interesting, it looks like what we have here is basically a perfect 60 degree angle. And I cut one and I fit it into place and make sure we snuck up on a good measurement. That's going to be And that looks pretty good, so I'm going to proceed with using this as the masterpiece, masterpiece, the master pattern for the other pieces. So I used the pattern and I marked where I'm going to have to make a, a lap joint where the two cross piece, where the two cross pieces cross. And to try to make that a little simpler, I took some of my scrap pieces, the offcuts from when I was doing the 30 degrees cut, and I. I temporarily screwed them to one of my crosscut jigs here so I can just slide the board along, making a bunch of cuts to hog out the waste. Made a few test cuts here to show that I'm going just halfway through the board because this is one of the scraps. And away we go. So that's one done, and then I will fit it into place. This one's a little bit loose, unfortunately, but I will fix that with the next one. And then do another one. Now it's not a dado blade, so it does leave a slightly rough texture, but Really, not bad. Two. Now, mark them. I want to make sure I remember to put them together the right way. This is a great half lap joint, but it's not exactly smooth as glass. So I'm going to use some epoxy for this joint, which will give me some gap filling characteristics and it'll make a nice strong joint. So with the two X pieces made for the ends, I want to attach the top and the bottom to them. So I've got them lifted up here so they're centered on the board and I need to get this installed. And I was trying to think of the best way to do it. Um, screwing into end grain is not really a good, not that strong. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is I'm going to put a dab of glue on each, put them in position and then uh, clamp it all up. And I'm going to put one screw into each joint, more or less to hold it temporary. And then I'm going to drill some 3 8 inch holes into the bottom so I can pound in some two or two and a half inch lengths of dowel with some wood. And hopefully that will give me a nice strong joint. Um, not sure how well that's going to translate to the camera because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff here. But I just wanted to explain what's going on. I was going to use screws to hold these in place while I did the dowels, but when I was working on the first one, I had it all clamped up 
And I'm like, it just seemed tight, so I just went ahead with the dowels, and really with all the clamps on it, it was kind of hard to try to fit the drills in, but in the end, that was really kind of fussy, because I kept having to move the clamps to give a bit of clearance, so I thought, for the second one, I just popped in a two-inch nail using my air gun, which uh, is nicely holding it in position now, and then I'm going to move ahead with drilling my dowel holes and getting that all done. So I've got the two legs, I've got the two leg assemblies at each end, and for the middle I just have a simple cross piece here. Um, this is seven inches wide. I was wondering about five inches or six inches, but I started with seven, and I think I like it like that. Nice and solid and substantial. It's just held together with clamps. It's loose, but even so, it's actually surprisingly solid, uh, which is good, because I was worried about racking, but I think we're going to be good there. This is also it's a really uh, satisfying part of the process when you've got this, you've had this image in your head, and sure you've been working on it with CAD, but when you actually see something coming together physically that you've just been envisioning, there's sort of like that excitement, but also the, does it work? Is there anything you want to change? Um, and so far it's working. Um, of course, it's upside down right now. This, this is going to be the top. There's going to be some, uh, it's going to be on wheels. It's going to be a mobile cart after all. And um, I want this to come apart, so I've got I bought a set of bought a set of bed bolts actually, and I'm going to put two in each end to uh, fasten this cross beam in. And I'm going to work on that now. And I've taken a scrap piece of plywood and I've cut it to eight inches, and that will position my crossbar. Here's an off cut from the crossbar that'll position it right where I want it. Pretty much in the center, though I'm always going to measure from the one side. And I need to strike the center because I need to put two holes in there. I need to drill two holes. And of course, the. Uh... Yeah, that's good. The cross. The cross. The cross beam is too tall to put on the drill press, but I can put this on the drill press and then these holes will guide the drill when I drill into the ends of the, of the long cross piece. Yeah. Okay, with a little bit of fiddling, we got these bolts installed now, and it's really solid. These two bolts on a seven inch board are really, uh, yeah, I was worried about racking because of the height, but solid as a rock. So, again, it's upside down. This is the understructure from the top, the cross beam, and the wheels, but that's as far as I'm taking it right now. I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip it down and stain it and finish it and then it will be assembled in place. Years ago I remember this time when my dad was building a bookshelf for me. I was just moving out of the house and I was not a woodworker at the time and my dad sent me into town to get some stain and I bought a can of stain based on color. Really didn't know what I was doing. And my dad complained because it was really thick. He said it was like chocolate. <coughs> and yeah, like this can of stain is half full. And uh, it is just, it's gel. <laughs> it is. I, I understand now what my dad complained about. It is, uh, the lady in the store is like, okay, this is this is good for vertical, and it's true. I mean, it's not dripping on this at all, but um, it is certainly not the runny stuff that we're used to dealing with when we're wiping a stain onto the furniture.
right, well that's about it for this one. Big thanks to everyone who stuck it out to the very end of the video. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by my shop and spending some time with me. If you want to see what I'm up to in between videos, then Instagram is probably your best bet for that. You can find links to my Instagram account and all my social media, my website too, in the video description below. And if you feel I've earned it, please consider subscribing and we will see you in the next video.